Hi there, I am Jessica Lowell. I am a luxury wedding and portrait photographer out of Northeast Georgia and I run 514 Photography where I believe it is my purpose to bring more joy to my client's day simply by being the one who gets to serve them with beautiful photographs. Today, I wanna to talk to you about being an amazing second shooter. Whether you're looking for a second shooter or you are a second shooter, or this is something you're trying to get into, these are my best tips for serving your lead photographer no matter who they are. So the first thing I like to do with my, um, with my second photographers, especially if I've never worked with them before or I'm interviewing them, I have a phone call with them before I send a contract or before uh, we actually work together. I walk through what I expect out of my second photographers. So if you're a second photographer and you're about to work for somebody new, Go ahead and be um, proactive and say, hey, can we talk? I want to make sure I pick your brain. I want to make sure I'm shooting for your style. And I want to make sure I know what you're expecting from me since every photographer expects something different, right? And while you're on the call with that photographer, don't forget to ask what you should wear. Should you wear a dress? Should you wear a blouse? Should you just wear jeans? It's very important that you show up dressed to match your photographer's brand. Um, the next tip I have is to time sync your camera the night before. I have all of my second photographers or associates log in to, or you don't have to log in, it's a free website, time.gov, time.gov, and sync their cameras, and I sync my cameras to the government time. That way we're not showing up trying to sync each other's cameras to some random off time. Um, so time sync your camera the day before, but make sure your lead photographer knows that that's what you're gonna use. Um, or tell them about it or educate them about that. There's actually a ton of photographers that don't know anything about uh, time.gov. And I know that because it's my current second photographer that educated me on it. So don't worry. Don't think that your lead photographer can't learn anything from you because you're a second, because they can. I love my second photographer that shoots with me for most of my weddings. I've learned from her. She's learned from me. We're an amazing team. God has blessed me with her. Um, the next tip I have, have your equipment ready the night before. If you've watched, I have another video prepping for a wedding. Some of these tips are going to be the same. For me, I have all of my camera batteries charged by the afternoon before the wedding and I have all of my gear fully packed and time synced. Cards, cards are formatted, batteries are in my cameras packed and by the door, ready to go the night before the wedding. This will help to make sure you're on time. The other thing is having a printed copy of the timeline. Uh, I also shared in that video, it's very important that um, guests or people that didn't pay you or people that don't know anything about you and, and the wedding party, they don't see you on your phone because they might be judging you thinking you're on social media. You might be checking the timeline, but someone might go, oh, their wedding photographer is always on their phone, right? Because as people, it's a little bit human nature to judge. So have a paper copy of the timeline and be on your phone as little bit as, as possible. If you are on your phone, it should look like it's because you're videoing, right? If you're videoing, um, this is another great tip, video behind the scenes and photograph behind the scenes for your lead photographer. So if you're gonna video behind the scenes, it's usually for Instagram stories. So you wanna make sure on your phone, you're videoing vertical. Video just some short clips of them shooting the bride. Make sure you have the photographer in there. Um, but don't do it all day, of course, because you still need to be shooting. Get some behind the scenes. That should be the only reason it looks like you're on your phone. Um, let's see, be early. This is a big one for me. If I have a second photographer that shows up even two minutes late, they're gonna have to work their tail off to have another opportunity to work with me again because you're making me look bad and you're giving me anxiety, right? Even if you've texted me and you told me you stopped in traffic. Uh, I covered this in my prepping for a wedding video. If I know it takes me an hour to drive to a venue, I leave two hours before my wedding. That might be too much for an associate but do not plan to arrive right on time because if you're arriving right on time, you're late. And that's part of this phone call and setting the expectation. I tell all of my associates and my second photographers when they have the opportunity to show with me, to, sh to shoot with me, that the start time is just that. If we're supposed to start shooting at one, that means we've already said hello, we've already given hugs, we have already swapped uh, SD cards 
and I've already ensured that you've time synced your camera, right? You don't show up at one if you're already supposed to be shooting at one. This is a very big deal. If you're chronically late and you're wondering why other photographers aren't rehiring you, that could be a big deal. Um, the next thing, be helpful, be serving, carry, carry bags, offer to carry bags. My seconds offer to carry my bag all the time. I won't let them do it, but offer, right? They want to see that you're taking the initiative. If you want to get hired again, take the initiative. The next tip is going to be, um, making sure you're paying attention to details. That's part of being helpful, right? Making sure pocket squares are all in place, making sure bridesmaids don't have hair ties on their wrists. Um, making sure the train and the veil are perfectly placed and no hairs out of place. Just paying attention to details while you guys are shooting side by side, helping the photographer, helping your lead photographer be a better lead photographer. That's part of you being there as part of the support system and being a great second photographer. Um, and when shooting along the head photographer, and this comes with that phone call before the wedding or before you ever work together, setting up those expectations, knowing what your expectations are. But um, I don't want my second photographer, if I've got the bride and groom set up, and I'm taking a straight on shot. I don't want my second photographer right here taking the same shot, right? I want her over there. I want her zooming in. I want her getting angles or focusing on the flowers or the like the side angle if I'm shooting straight. Uh, peek down through a bush and get some foreground. The great thing about second shooting and what I love about second shooting is it's the least stressful position of the photographers, right? You get to play around. You get to um, create uh, fun angles and do other things while your lead photographer is making sure all the safe stuff is happening first and then all the artistic stuff. But you can start artistically as the second photographer, right? Um, so get creative. Don't shoot over your photographer's shoulder unless your photographer educated you that they want you to, right? I also tell all of my seconds that I tend to be vertical heavy. I shoot portrait style a lot more than I realize until you know, as I start culling through photos. So I tell all my seconds, Hey, by the way, I'm portrait heavy. So I need you to be a little more landscape heavy. So in those cases, my second does know that they might come get one of the same shots that I'm taking as if I'm taking it vertical, they'll take it horizontal. But again, I educate all of my second photographers. So if you're going to be a second photographer and your photographer hasn't taken that initiative, go ahead and set up a phone call with them. They will love it. They will want to rehire you if you take that initiative. Um, let's see when shooting by yourself. So my associate, my second photographer, excuse me, I call them the same thing. When she's shooting the grooms getting ready, she knows what I expect because I tell her. And she will also shoot just the grooms and the groomsmen photos, um, their group photos by themselves and the groom and each one of the groomsmen. There's one shot that I want, one safe shot. And that is with the groom standing face on with his hands in his pockets and his thumbs out and all of the groomsmen like on a 45 angle towards him, right? All of these guys tight no pockets and no air pockets seen between the guys. That's my safe shot because that's usually the shot that gets picked for the album is where everybody's just standing nice. Then I tell my associate she can have creative control, but make sure you get that one shot for me. The next tip I kind of already covered, but taking behind the scenes photos for your lead photographer. Again, they will love you for it. They will rehire you for it. Um, as you're taking the couple of the pictures that you need of the couple and of the wedding and of the details, keep an eye on your lead photographer. Take photos of her as she's working so she can use them for Instagram, so that she can use them for TikTok. Take a few videos. Again, the only time you should have your phone in your hand where the, the clients and the guests see that you've, you've got a phone in your hand should be because it looks like you're shooting something, right? Should be, um, make sure it's vertical because it's usually for Instagram stories and make sure it doesn't look like you're actually scrolling on Instagram stories. The next one is very important. You never, ever, ever promote your own business at another photographer's wedding. It, this should be covered in your contract. If you don't have a contract, you should definitely get one. Um, uh, or ask your lead photographer for one, but it's very important. If a guest comes up to you and says, you guys are amazing, can I have your card? My daughter's getting married or I'm getting married. You do not under any circumstances 
tell them about your business because that's not who's shooting that wedding day. Uh, you say, I work for 514 Photography. I work for XYZ Photography. Let me go get you a card or let me show you that person's Instagram. Let me Dropbox you, Dropbox. Let me airdrop you that person's website. It's very important. It's um, do the right thing. Do the right thing, especially if you really value the person you're working for, which you should, doesn't matter who they are, because they are paying you and you agreed to work under their brand. And last but not least, communicate, communicate, communicate. On the wedding day, if you need to communicate about anything, don't be afraid to do it. If you're like, hey, I'm done with the groomsmen early, what would you like me to do? If you um, have any questions like, I already photographed this like this, but I noticed this, do you want me to shoot that or did you already get it? Or um, if like your lead photographer is shoot, still shooting the final family portrait, but you've already got bride and groom portraits and all those things out of the way, would you like me to go ahead and photograph some of the cocktail hour? Do you want me to get a head start on details? Do you want me to go ahead and get light stand set up? Communicate, ask how you can help, but also tell about the things you've already covered so they don't have to ask. Um, and. Uh, I mean, even if you just need a potty break, uh, I tell all of my seconds this, I encourage breaks, right? There's no need to, to exhaust yourself. But if we're both on the dance floor during the reception and you just disappear to the bathroom, I don't know where you're at. I tell all of my associates, go to the bathroom whenever you want. I mean, even if you just need to take a break or you need to run to your car and make a quick phone call, um, any other person in any other business legally gets breaks. We're like the only industry that doesn't. But I make sure my associate comes to me and says, hey, I'm gonna take a break. Hey, I need to go to the restroom. That way I know they're not on the dance floor. That way I know I am. I am anyway, but I never want a parent or somebody who invested in us to ever think we're not working, right? I don't ever want them to look around and go, where's the photographer? So the importance in that is the two of you communicating in the same way. If I have to go to the restroom, I go find my associate. I'm like, hey, I'm going to the restroom. Make sure you stay on the floor till I'll let you know when I get back. Or, hey, I'm going to take a quick break. So uh, communication is key. Um, and then after the wedding, not the next day, but maybe later that week, if you want to text, email, or uh, I love Marco Polo. If you want to reach out to your photographer, especially if it's the first time you ever worked together and say, hey, I really enjoyed working with you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Also, um, as you go through the photos, I would love to have any notes um, that would help me be a better photographer for you, maybe even a better photographer for me. I love helping build my associates businesses up also. Um, that's personal. That's me. Some people think it's competition and they don't, but if you're that kind of photographer who doesn't mind also helping your second photographers grow their business, you can even give them business tips and stuff like that. But as the second photographer, follow up after the wedding, ask questions, um, ask how you can be a better service and let them know you loved working with them if you did and that you would love the opportunity to do it again. All of these things are going to make you an amazing second photographer. They're also going to make you an amazing lead photographer in your own wedding and an amazing communicator for your own second photographers for those own weddings where you are the lead photographer. All of these tips are going to help you be a better photographer, whether it's for someone else or for yourself. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.